Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and the other day I was talking to my wife about what kind of, she wanted to open my son, my 16 year old a bank account and all I can think of is why open a bank account this day and time? I would rather open him either a Glint account or an Uphold account, <laughs> I mean, and I'm being serious. Um, in, in the Glenn account, he can, he can buy gold that he can spend. In the Uphold account, he can buy crypto, and they, they have like, uh, I think they have a tokenized type gold. Uh, if you look, they got precious metals in some areas, they got stocks. They've got all kinds of stuff. Um, who wants fiat when you can have gold or crypto? Not me. And for his future, I mean, golly. Anyway, these are both my sponsors, and I have an account in both, and I want him to have one too. Banks. <laughs> Talk about overrated. Um, the links to these are in the very top of the description of this video. They're both my sponsors. Now, let's get to something interesting. So, I played you a couple of clips from Jimmy Valley um, when he was talking to Link2, who's also one of my sponsors. Link in the top of the description. 10% off till the end of the year. Look at that. Three, three sponsors right, right there. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So, but look at this, this clip right here is great because Jimmy Valley is kind of giving you his optimistic thoughts on the end of the year. And I liked it. Listen to this. It could happen too, folks. You never know. We don't know. Clear. We are moving into a new paradigm about the way the global financial system works and the way payments are going to work. This, we are going digital full stop. Uh, knowing that, uh, it's, I think if, if, if you're the type of person who wants to get ahead of a trend uh, and participate in that trend, uh, then, then you should you should get involved. I think we're going through a very natural shakeout in the space right now. The, the failure of FTX and these exchanges, uh, the exposure of corruption in the industry had to occur. Uh, and that's a good thing. That's going to be healthy for us going forward. So it's tough to go through. It scares a lot of people. Uh, I understand that. Uh, but, you know, it's, at the end, it's going to be a really good thing. We're going to have the real projects uh, that are going to survive through this and they're going to grow and they're going to be the Googles, the Amazons um, and, and other types of platforms, you know, just like, you know, when the Internet changed everything. So, um, you know, enjoy your Christmas. Who knows? Maybe we end up getting a, a Christmas gift here in the next couple of days and this stuff gets resolved and we get to uh, to have a really great new year, too. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I only wish. Now, um, even though I don't ever go into all these um, these uh, bearable guy things, the bearable guy posted a Christmas um, picture here, and I, I just wanted to draw your attention to one thing. One of the things he's got is a king that looks angry, and it reminds me when I when I hear that. Do you remember JV the Great a while back put out this clip? It's Mark Yusko. Now, understand, Mark Yusko is not a dumb guy, but these guys. I, in my opinion, I've always said these guys intentionally act like they don't understand XRP. They understand XRP completely. I think it's a threat to some of their core investments like Bitcoin, and that's why they are scared to even talk about it ever. But Mark Yusko, he's like a Duke graduate. He's not a dummy. So when you hear him going on, oh, well, you know, I just need to look into it more. <laughs> Whatever. He doesn't need to look into anything. But he he's a thousand percent right on this in that ripple did go with the king but i think ripple wins listen to this but here here's the thing we're in the then they fight you stage and it's going to get worse before it gets better and if you come at the king you better not miss and i think that's a little bit what's happened with xrp yeah, he here is missed. but he, he thinks they've missed but he thinks wrong if he really thinks that but when you when you what would you do if if um if somebody's coming at the king? Well, one of the things you'd do is you'd get your Jim Cramers of the world to go on and say this because of course they do whatever they're told. 
I think that crypto, I mean, I sold them my crypto. I announced that. Well, let's, let's expound on that. You would have your Gary Gensler's um, go and try to partner with um, FTX's of the world. That's one of the things you'd do. But you would also have your your uh, government-controlled media like CNBC and Jim Cramer to say things like this. TV, what I did with crypto. But I would not touch crypto in a million years because I wouldn't trust the deposit. Yeah, he's the same guy. And you're making no distinction he, between centralized, decentralized. This is the same guy who said that Sam Bankman-Fried was the next J.P. Morgan, but it wasn't just him. It was almost everybody on his network. There's a, there's a funny clip that I showed you the other day that has all of them, oh, is he the next Vanderbilt? Is he the next J.P. Morgan? We don't know. It's one of them. Fought regulation. They didn't want regulation. And you don't have regulation. So if you have your money in any of those, I, look, I'm not calling you an idiot. I'm just saying you're using a lot of blind faith. And I like to have my money at J.P. Morgan. And I check on Monday to see whether my balance is there. Bet you do. It's there. It feels good. Try getting your money out. When I, I had, what have I told you for four years, folks? The plan has always been to when this, when all of these people are ready, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, when they've got their custody ready, when all of them are ready, they're gonna they're gonna go after these. They're gonna get a Gary Gensler to go after these exchanges for them, so that all of those assets get gathered by the J.P. Morgan, so they they get to have and make the money off of this industry that these people know is coming. That's the game. I've said it for over four years. I'm not gonna mention the firm that I had my money in, but it was a fight to get the money out. A fight. And I think that everybody who owns these various coins, you know, Solana, Litecoin, I think you're, uh, I do think. Notice, this is the third time we've seen him do it, okay? Um, he, he, every time that he mentions this, what is the, what are the, the digital assets that Wall Street and their buddies at CNBC have been touting for years now is Bitcoin and Ethereum, Bitcoin and Ethereum, Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is the third time in the last month that he's, this is the one time that he did, I don't think he calls out XRP here, but he's called out Litecoin and Solana both times, okay, with XRP. Idiot. Okay? I did not go to college to get stupid. These people who own these things should not own them. They shouldn't own them. Well, and now we got Gensler. Well, I would agree with him on Litecoin. I've, o I've always said that Litecoin to me is uh, just, I mean, that's, to me, that's always been one of these that had no purpose. The freaking founder literally sold all of his, and it's just something that exists now. Into the Times, arguing that the existing laws may be sufficient. Even well, though a lot of these guys, I, I said, I sent it. Why don't you come on and enforce them? I think they need to do a big sweep. Of it. They have to stop having people uh, creating money, Carl. It's the, what they need to do is get someone who's honest in as SEC chairman, and then start talking about what you need to do. The first thing you do is you get these people who are known and proven liars out of our government. That's the first thing you do. Then you get the media, you get the Jim Cramers of the world who are on record, on video. He's on video saying that when he ran a hedge fund, they would intentionally make the market think something that wasn't true so that he could get his hedge fund to go in the other direction. I mean, this guy is a, these are, these people are awful, awful people. And they're, they're the problem. Should have money by Cretans. I don't think Cretans should create money and then suck people in. These are I don't th think Wall Street crooks should be in charge. That's what I don't think. And even the worst Nasdaq stocks. Yep. And yet, there we are, we've got them up there, light point. I don't think there should be a revolving door between the SEC, CFTC, Goldman, JP Morgan. I don't think that should be. But Jim Cramer thinks that's great. And you know why he thinks it's great? because that allows him and all his buddies to be the ones in the loop that find out when something's going to happen before it happens and make money off of it. And that's the fact, Jack. And they know it, but they think it's okay because they look down on you. You're peasants to them. We're all just a bunch of peasants and they're, they're Wall Street. They've had a job at Goldman Sachs and this and that. And you're just peasants to be stepped on and look down on. You're, you're the people that, that he um, shorts the stock and then he 
makes sure he goes out in the media and makes and creates helps to helps Wall Street to create the perception that they need to be created. That's what his job is. And he knows it. Speaking of lies and liars, uh, Judge Ronnie Abrams steps down from the FTX trial. It's come to the court's attention that the law firm Davis Polk and Wardell LLP, at which my husband is a partner, advised FTX in 2021 as well as represented parties that may be adverse to FTX and defendant Bankman Free. So this, this judge rules on Sam Bankman, gets him out on bail, gets him, they get to the United States, this judge gets him out on bail so that he can fly first class back home to mommy and daddy's, daddy's house. But she never, her husband never thought to, to go to her before she, before she let him off. Husband never thought to go to her and say, oh wait, my law firm may have been representing FTX, so you should recuse yourself. Never thought to do that. Well, if you believe that, now actually this is probably a really good day to buy my igloo in South Georgia because today we happen to have below freezing temperatures. It doesn't happen, happen, happen much in this part of the world, but just today, but by tomorrow morning, I have a feeling it will be thawed out and you won't have an igloo anymore, but it's a great deal if you believe that this judge did not know when she got this guy out on bail. Then we got this, FBI is now looking at Sam Trabuco, I don't know if I'm saying that name right, the former C co-CEO of Alameda Research and Nishad Singh, they're not going to get the easy deal that Caroline and Gary Wang are receiving. First one's to squeal, folks. I'm surprised Hinman hasn't squealed yet. Scoop from Eleanor Terrett, SDNY is getting ready to announce more indictments against players with ties to FTX Alameda. I'm told an announcement could be made as soon as Monday. Uh-oh. And then there's this. On October 5th, 2021, Bankman Freed, FTX, GC Ron Miller, and then FTX President Brett Harrison went to dinner at a luxury Indian restaurant, Rasika West End, with Dan Berkowitz. Berkowitz went on to become SEC General Counsel, announced his resignation yesterday. Um, and uh, then uh, BitBoy put this out. This is an email that caused Dan Burke. This is the email that caused Dan Burke to step down from the SEC right here. Um, it says, We are, this is Sam Bankman freed to him. We are the natural choice to be the umpires of the crypto industry. This is Dan Berkowitz. Thank you, uh, Updated Links. I was watching the Dodgers versus Giants the other night and saw FTX, the official cryptocurrency exchange of Major League Baseball. I gather this is not news. I'm not sure why MLB needs to have a cryptocurrency exchange, but glad to see that it is the one that supports regulation. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, and then Mark Wettgen, remember, he was at the CFTC, and then he, he was the general counsel for um, FTX. Then he deleted his Twitter account once we all started to zero in on this. Um, and this is Wheezy, uh, August 26, he emailed CFTC Chair Rostin Benham concerning an urgent matter pertain pertaining to Ledger X. He gets that meeting the same day at 6 p.m. The very next day, Gary Gensler meets with Mark Wetgen. And three days after that, it's announced FTX will, will ac acquire Ledger X. I give you Gary Gensler's involvement. And then from this is from uh, uh, Frank, not Frank, Fred Rispoli, I'm sorry. Um, Merry Christmas, SEC. U.S. Postal Service says you received our certified mailing of the Ethereum December, I don't know if that means, Ethereum DEC lawsuit against you. You have until February 9th to answer and let us know if you think Ethereum network are securities, but we both know you're going to try and move to dismiss. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that Fred Rispoli and his company, I guess, is Hodel Law, is suing the S.